Matthew chapter 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Religion stops right there. We're done with the book. If we are religion. There's no more. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father. But by me. And when you come to Matthew 28 verse 1 and quit. Let me ask you a question. And I'm not picking on religions. I'm trying to show you the truth through the Bible. Out of the Mormons. Who has risen from the grave? Out of the Roman Catholic Church. What Pope has come out of that grave? Jesus in the Roman Catholic Church. He comes up on Easter. And the following year he goes back on the cross to Good Friday and you, you redo it over and over and you take a sacrifice every week. Of the Hindu, where is the proof that grandma is now that cow? What I'm trying to show you is what we're going to do right now. What we're going to read is the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we are now going to step out of religion and into Christianity. Even Paul says, if there's no resurrection, eat, drink, and be merry for we're going to die tomorrow. Paul said that. So what we're going to read is the life, is the blessed hope. It is God... The, the gospel is Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He's buried. Here's where we are. But that's not it. The gospel. And arose from the grave the third day according to the scriptures. Making our salvation complete in Christ Jesus minus any religion. Religion, they don't come out of the grave. Or there's one big general resurrection. What? Or you come back and be a, a cockroach. But now we step into Christianity. And behold, there was a great earthquake. There was a great earthquake when he died. Now, as he's coming out of that tomb, there's a great earthquake. That earthquake happened about 9 o'clock at night. I mean, well, 9 o'clock would be there, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. I think it was another thing where it says 6. Well, we're looking at three days later. later. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no, that, that don't work. So Matthew 27, 28 throws the theology of the Roman Catholic Church out the window. If there's no resurrection in your religion, it throws you out the window. That goes with Allah, Baloni, and whoever. Behold, there was a great earthquake. Can your God cause an earthquake? For the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. That's Jesus Christ who appeared before Joseph while he's in the womb of Mary. Can your God do that? He's laying in the tomb. How God opened that door. He manifests himself as the angel of the Lord and, and uh this is a just a tiny little earthquake to move that rock. How's that? Descended from heaven. And came and rolled the stone from the door and sat upon it. Hi, guys. Remember, there are centurions, there are soldiers watching this tomb. 
They just watched the seal get broken and the rock roll and an earthquake, which happened when this guy died. And the Bible says now there are people popping out of the graves, walking around, visiting people. And they're not Jehovah Witnesses. His countenance was like his countenance was like lightning, pureness, and his raiment white as snow, just pure. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake. These are the guys watching this thing. Their knees are knocking. And became as dead men. They just fainted. <laughs> the angel answered and said unto the woman. The women are here now. Fear not ye. This is a big scene. Earthquake. Stones rolling. Soldiers hitting the ground. For I know that ye seek Jesus. Which was crucified. Make sure we got the right Jesus here. Paul says there are other Jesuses. He's not here. He's seated on the rock as the angel of the Lord. He's not here. That's the greatest news ever be published. And it's not a newspaper. It's in the Bible. He's not here. For he is risen. There is. Christianity resurrection he was crucified he's not here he's risen you want to go visit any of the tombs cemeteries burial plots whatever you want to call it shrines museums of all the other great religious people and scientists you'll find they are there but not Jesus Come see the place where the Lord lay. Come on in. I was right there. I'm the angel of the Lord. There's where he laid. See, he's not here. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Bodily gone. Soul gone. Spirit gone. The slab, only thing is there is clothes. That's it. Disciples didn't come by night because there are guards out there. Go quickly. Notice how every command to somebody who is a witness of Jesus Christ is to go. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. These are the women. Can women can women witness the gospel? These are the first ones who are going to go to the disciples. They're told by Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord, go tell those men. So don't tell me in your church women are not allowed to say anything. Just not allowed to have the authority over the men. They can't be pastors. They can't be leaders of the church. But they sure can teach Sunday school. They sure can go on the street and tell someone how to get saved. They sure can pass out gospel tracts. And... I would even say so far as they can preach on the street, they're not authority over anybody. They're telling people about Jesus Christ, and I may just shut some of you out by saying that. They can't have the authority over the people, but they can tell about Jesus. What are they going to go tell those disciples? He's not here. He is risen. What do I tell them on the street? He's not in the grave. He's risen at the, at the right hand of the Father. They've got the same message I got, and they're women. He is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. So as you're going to go see these, these men, he's going to go before you. He goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. There's a prophecy by the angel. You're going to see the Jesus. But go tell his disciples he's not here. But you will see him. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre, and fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. 
Man, they're just sighting, hitting the ground, running as much as they can. Praising God and whoo. Wasn't that a spectacular thing that we just saw? And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. See, he went in before you. Saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And when they would be held him by the feet, guess what they would see? Holes. Now, wouldn't that be a reminder to John as he's there with Mary, the mother of Jesus, at the cross? I just saw you. I just saw you a couple, three nights ago, and you. Those were nails there. He told Thomas, "Rich in that finger." I believe by this verse, and you can take it and throw it in a garbage can, but when we're absent from this body and present with the Lord, I believe we're going to be held His feet first. I'm not worthy to walk. Listen, I've heard people say, "Oh, I'm going to go, my man Jesus is giving him a high five. You're a fool. John says, I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoes. Well, what's that? Isn't that his feet? Didn't many of the people that came to Jesus, they hit the ground, put their face in the dirt. I believe the, only, the first thing we're going to see of Jesus is holy toenails. And then we're going to see feet, and we're not going to see no ordinary feet. We're going to see holy feet. I don't mean H-O, I mean W-H. Or H O E. H O H O. I'll learn how to spell one of these days. You know what I mean. Then said Jesus unto. Notice he's speaking. Notice they grab him by his feet. This is Jesus. Body, soul, and spirit. After he was crucified, after he was put in the tomb, after he's been dead, after he's been buried, here he is alive. Three and a, three and a, uh, three days and three nights later. Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren. Oh. Go tell the Jews. That go that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. Listen, this is not a blind faith. Paul says over 400 people saw the resurrected Christ. How many women were there? Mary. Mary. All right, there's two Marys right now in Matthew. Two. There are 11 disciples. 13. There are 13 people right now that have seen the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to go forward, he's going to go before him, and he's going to go show himself in Israel. If you could, if you can't, just listen to me. If you could take these people before Acts 1, Paul says 400, I believe it is. And if you could resurrect them into a courtroom, any time, any era, any country, and bring these people in the courtroom, stand before the judge and say, I saw the resurrected Christ. After he died, after he was buried, after the three days, I saw Jesus Christ. I saw the nail-pierced hands, the nail-pierced feet. Maybe not the side, but if I saw that. Do you know a rectable judge has to say, your witness is true? Do you know that a court system, if it's right and honorable, has to honor the witness of 400 people? Let's take half of that. Let's say there's an auto accident and a cop finds 200 people at that auto accident and they all give the same testimony about that accident. That driver in the blue car was the stupid idiot. Do you know the court has to rely on those 200 people that the driver of the blue car caused the accident? There's no way beyond evil, wickedness, 
or bribery that a judge would outclaim 200 people in their witness and Paul says there's 400. You can't find one dead pope walking today. You can't find one religious person who has died who is walking today. You can't find one government leader who's died. Listen, a lot of these people today in America, they want Ronald Reagan to come from the dead. He's not. Jesus Christ is coming. You know what my faith and belief is in the story of Matthew 28. All these people saw the resurrected Christ. And you know what I believe? At the rapture or at my death, I'm going to see Jesus Christ. Do you know how many brethren of mine since Matthew 28 or since believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved has gone on who has passed from life to death from the body to Jesus Christ that has witnessed him? I'm in a great number of crowd. Let me ask you a question. With the disciples here in Matthew 20, they have now seen Jesus Christ, right? He's alive. He's resurrected, right? Do they need to believe in a resurrected Christ? No, their faith. There he is. Do you know the day I see Jesus Christ, whether it be rapture or absent from the body and presence, my faith of Jesus Christ is done. There he is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I hope to see Jesus Christ. I'm hoping he come. The evidence of things not seen. I haven't seen him yet, but when I see him, there he is. And here he is now. Now, when they were, go were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city. Now, these are the guys that freaked out, paralyzed themselves, fainted. Some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things were done. Why didn't they go to the Roman leaders? The chief priest went to Pilate and said, hey, listen, I want you to put a guard on them. And look what he says over here. He says, last chapter, verse 65. Pilate said to him, you have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. Now, either that watch is of the Roman government or that watch is of the Jewish people. That can be read both ways. But they go running to the chief priest. That's the wrong people to go run to. The women go to the disciples. The soldiers go to the chief priests. And showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. We're standing there, we're staring at our posts, we're smoking our cigarette, and then the earthquake came, and then the rock started rolling, and boom, it rolled open, and then we saw this this, this being in all white sitting on top of it, and these two women came and they talked about Jesus is risen from the grave. He, he's not here. Go in there and take a look and go tell somebody that he's risen from the grave and he's going to go before him. That's exactly what those soldiers told him. Of what they know of how much they fainted. What they're able to comprehend. If they comprehend the whole thing, that's what they told them. If they didn't comprehend that much, man, there was an earthquake, that stone road, we saw an angel, we passed out. And when they were assembled with the elders, the chief priests, here is the Sanhedrin again, and had taken counsel. This is the same counsel that wanted to put Jesus to death. Remember? This is not good news. They're not going to have a revival meeting. They had just realized that error that they made is now even a big error. The Jesus who they have killed wanted dead and we're pleased he's dead. Uh-oh, he lives. And if he did us more damage when he was alive, he's going to do us much damage now he's alive. They gave large money unto the soldiers. Bribe them. Say, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. All right, that's a lie. The consul is telling these soldiers, lie. Problem number one. 
You are going to trust somebody who's just told you to lie. Well, what if they lie about protecting you? Because they just told you to lie. That's not... Number two. If these men were to be caught and told the Roman government, which would be that these guys are Romans. I'm zooming again. If a Roman soldier was caught asleep on his post, he'd be dead. It was capital punishment for a soldier to fall asleep on duty. Now, if they were the chief priest men, well, I don't know. So I want you to believe us liars for you to tell a lie that will protect you, that you do something that you were not supposed to do on your post. Number three, his disciples came by night and stole him. Now you're in bigger trouble because the thing that you were supposed to be guarding, you let go. What if guards in America were put in charge of a nuclear bomb device? You protect that thing. And it was stolen by the whoever. Those guys are in big trouble. But what? You fell asleep? You're in bigger trouble. I wouldn't trust these guys. These are the guys that put Jesus on the cross. If any complications would come later, I'm, I'm reading more into this. I know I understand. I know this is a bunny trail. But these guys are putting themselves in more jeopardy. Why don't you just go to Pilate and say, Pilate, you're not going to believe this. What? There was this earthquake. The stone started rolling away. And we saw this angel sit on the rock. If that's what they knew, after they passed out. If that was what they knew... Let's go back to what Pilate would say. Verse 65. Pilate said to him, You have a watch. Go your way and make it as sure as you can. Pilate would probably say, Well, I'll be. I, I told you that was going to happen, didn't I? I told you to make it as sure as you can, but it ain't going to keep. You know, you know, Pilate might have believed. If these soldiers who came back said, Pilate, he's gone. And I don't mean he walked out, uh, you know, uh, alive. I, I don't mean he was stolen. He was there, but he's not there no more. I don't understand what's going on. Pilate would have. But instead, they take this, this Sanhedrin, this council that put Jesus on the cross, and ends up in a lie. That's what happens. A lie is no good. And if this come to the governor's ears, Pilate. Let's see, that was last night too. Oh, where is that? We're talking about Pilate. In chapter 27, verse 2. When they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. They are keeping this information from Pilate for some reason. They went to Pilate and said, let us seal that tomb. But they wouldn't go to Pilate and say that tomb is empty now. Why not? They are preventing these soldiers from telling Pilate the truth. Now, I know I'm saying something that's probably off the wall and far-fetched and all that. And you can go ahead and say that. But... If it comes to the governor's ear, that is Pilate. They don't want Pilate to know. We're going to take care of it in this council. We're going to make you lie. Here is money. We will persuade him and secure you. Really, you bunch of liars, you bunch of murderers? I would be worried about my own tail. But they took the money. And we don't know what would happen to Pilate if he would have heard this testimony. Now, you know he's got the news eventually. This, this circulated all around. That one that just died on Calvary. That one they crucified is living alive, speaking, talking. 
and pilots never heard of anymore. The last time you hear a pilot is going, you make it as sure as you can, that's it. And he's mentioned by the Sanhedrin. If, if, he, if it comes to his ears, we will persuade him and secure. They have good persuasion of him. They persuade him to take an innocent man and crucify him. Pilate didn't have a backbone when it came to the government. So they took the money and did as they were told. So they had to tell people his disciples came and took the body. That's what they were told. People asked them, well, we fell asleep. His disciples came and stole the body. So they told that story. It was a lie. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews unto this day. The Jews report, hey, did you hear Jesus Christ is, is resurrected and living? Yeah, his disciples came by night when the guards were sleeping and took the body. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard that. That's what they're teaching down in the synagogue. That's what I heard last, last Saturday in the synagogue. You guys fell asleep. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the religion people, here, go tell this lie and we'll pay you for it. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, where it all began. Into a mountain, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Jesus told him, go here. And they go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. John 20, 24, 20. Who's that? That's Thomas. And we get more of the story when we get to John. Each gospel tells a part of Jesus' life. The next gospel tells more of that life. The third gospel tells even more great details. Lee, not the other one had. And in all four gospels together, you get a wonderful story. And John finishes the last gospel. Man, we, if we were to write everything that happened... There would not be enough books or paper. But we know scripture, scripture, someone doubted. And Jesus came and spank unto them, saying, All power. Isn't that what video games go for and all? Alien movies, force be with you, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Go. That's a that's a verb that's an action that is the only English word that makes a complete sentence you could write go period and that's a complete sentence no other word can do that and there's great explanations you know paragraphs wrong I'll just tell you the short version that is it that's the shortest sentence in English language go go ye therefore and teach all nations isn't that a change from the beginning of Jesus ministry why would he say all nations now because the Jews put him on that cross now go to the gen oh, oh. Son of David, my daughter is so bad. Please help me. Oh, son of David, my daughter is so bad. Jesus, will you get rid of her? I'm only here for the... For the and I'm not quoting this verse completely. I'm just here for the, the children of the house of the Jews. Oh, Lord, please. All right. Thy words, your daughter's healed. Now it's go to all nations. I bet you most of them Saturnians that were there that day have heard this news. I bet you many of them believe. They had more faith than the Israelites did. I bet you some of those soldiers probably repented and got right. You mean that guy I'm holding, he's alive? Yeah. Man, we watched him die. Man, he's in Galilee I hear right now. 
All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach, witness, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There's no church age doctrine yet. This is the beginning of the book of Acts. This is all they know right now. That Jesus is alive. You teach them that. You tell them what happened. You baptize them. Teach them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. You find it all through Matthew. And lo, I am with you always. That's kind of funny because by Acts 1, he goes into heaven. But John tells you he's going to give you a comforter. He'll never leave thee or forsake thee. Even unto the end of the world. Now look at that. That goes right back. Lord, please tell us chapter 24 and 25. 26 is the really last dealing of, of the nation of Israel. 27, 28, he's, he has his last supper. He's in the garden praying. He, he's, he's a prisoner. So the last real talk he had with the disciples living was what the end days are going to I'll be with you. All those things I told you about the end of the times and all that, I'll be with you. And all the stuff you're going to go through in the book of Acts. I know we got Mark, Luke, and John coming up. But next would be Acts. All the things that are going to happen you in the book of Acts. I'm with you. When those Sanhedrin, Peter, and John take you into prison. I'm with you. James, when they chop off your head. I'm with you. John, when they put you in that boiling liquid. I'm with you. Peter, when they crucify you. I'm with you. Peter, all the times you end up in jail in the book of, I'm with you. When they hate you and they throw you out, I'm with you. That's a great comfort to what comes next in the book of Acts. When they start getting persecuted. You know why they're persecuted? You know why they're angry? Because that Jesus that they put in the tomb is no more in the tomb. And you know why they get angry when you come around with the gospel in the public and tell them? Because they rather have a God that's in a grave that can't control their lives. They don't want a living God. And Jesus Christ is the living God. And it begins with at least 13 people. The 11 disciples and two women. This goes off there. Paul says 400 before he gets goes to the Father. That's quite a bit of a witness.